March 1st, 2020. It is Friday, March 1st, 2024. And earlier today, I posted a video on how to objectively dissect the news, how to um, analyze what you hear in ways that you can align it with things that are going on in your own home and in your own community so that what they are reporting makes more sense to you and you know what to investigate or even when to investigate because the decisions that are being made will trickle down um, to your home. And I was looking for something else, but I came across um, this particular uh, video on Cop City. And I remembered watching a video on Cop City last year at some point. And so I started to put pieces together and ask myself, what in the hell is going on in Georgia? Um, the uh, Cop City... Um, protests are not new. They've been going on a really long time. So I want to put together um, some video that I have had uh, on Cop City and allow you an opportunity to dissect uh, these reports in a way that is meaningful to you, especially if you live in Georgia, where all of the heat is around President Trump and Fannie Willis's uh, indictment of, of Donald Trump. So let me just show you this video and then move on. The Public Safety Training Center has passed every vote that it has taken, has been taken for it. Uh, this so is the mayor. From the city council to the Cab County commissioners. It has been approved by the Environmental Protection Division. Every lawsuit that opponents have attempted has failed in the courts. A majority of Atlantans believe that we need a place to train our police and fire rescue officers. The new facility is almost 70% complete with construction. And see, our current training facilities are old and dilapidated and condemned. And we need effective places for us to train our uh, first responders. So while this downward trend in crime is good news, there is still a lot of work that needs to be done. Okay. New firefighters and police. Just two weeks ago, myself, along with our police chief, came before you, and we said that we would not stop our attempts to go after the individuals who are responsible for the targeted attacks against our city and our attempt to build a public safety training center. Yes, this is an ongoing investigation, and we have been resulting in targeted attacks against our city. I'd like to build a public safety training center. Yes, this is an ongoing investigation, and we have been resulting in targeted attacks against our city. I'd like to thank our local and federal partners for assisting us in our efforts thus far, and it has not ended and it will not end until we catch everyone involved. As a result, we had an arrest earlier this morning for an execution of a warrant. That individual was arrested is John Robert Mazarak, born March 1993. And he is charged with first-degree arson. I repeat, he is charged with first-degree arson. Yeah, the investigation is still ongoing, so we're not going to speak specifics. Of course, Crime Stoppers is anonymous, and so we can never be able to speak to uh, tips that came through that location. Uh, but this is a collective effort. There's a lot of uh, capabilities being uh, deployed by our federal, our state, and our local partners. Right now, it is one arson, sir. The investigation is, is very active, ma'am. There's a reason we serve three search warrants today. Uh, we do, uh, we're looking at a wide range of areas we believe evidence is held that will identify who is responsible for the others and who else was responsible besides this gentleman. You said that there are three locations. Were they all in the city of Atlanta? Two were in the city of Atlanta. One was in an unincorporated DeKalb County. DeKalb.
arsenic could have been related to. Any details? Pay attention to body language. Arson at the Atlanta Police Precinct in July of 2023. The Special Operations Precinct. It was a 180 Southside Industrial. Uh, that is where motorcycles of this department were set on fire. Uh, that is the precinct that was occupied uh, at the time uh, that we alleged that Ms. Madrick set that fire, and that is why he was arrested this morning. Do you have an idea of the dollar amount of the damage during that arson Our public affairs unit can get that for you. I do not have that right in front of me. Right now. Um, I just lost it. Right, I'm not um, so, when you guys came out last two weeks ago, uh, we heard from uh, the South Cobb City folks saying that they they're going to continue doing stuff like this or these public demonstrations because they just don't feel like their voices have been heard. This may be a question for the mayor. I uh, feel like that they don't, aren't getting to be able to, they feel that this should be stopped. They have a 100,000 signatures on a petition ballot, and, and they just feel that their voices aren't being heard here, and this is their way of doing, being able to make their voices heard. I mean, any comment on that? Yeah, this is not the way to make sure your voice is heard. Uh, this is destructive, this is criminal, and this is leading to someone being arrested and going to jail. So this is not the way to make your voice heard. The way to make your voice heard is to write letters or send information that you think that we can make alternate decisions uh, by going to city council, by uh, asking us what changes we can make. But this is why we had two distinctive different sets of citizen groups provide input that we have incorporated just about all of those citizens input things from changing the front entrance from key road to uh, constitution things like making sure that it's publicly uh, accessible park space and uh, trails to making sure that we okay um are these the kinds of things that people are concerned about who are protesting cop city and were they included in these um these focus groups to determine how to build it. We in Norfolk know this drill very well. 